Can Oklahoma State beat Utah? Is Kansas State the favorite to win the Big 12 right now? And Baylor and Colorado is an interesting matchup this week. Time to get the Big 12 squad together. You're talking ball with the Big 12 squad. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU, from Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up, it's the Big 12 squad and we have a seat for you. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up, you're part of the Big 12 squad. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Big 12 Squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the Big 12 Conference. Thank you for making your favorite Locked On Big 12 family of shows your first listen every single day. We got Cody Stovall of Locked On Oklahoma State, JT Wister still of Locked On Utes, Jay Catch of Locked On BYU Cougars, Richie Bradshaw of Locked On Sun Devils, and Chris Level of Locked On Texas Tech. Parker Ainsworth was in the waiting room on the one week that Houston wins. On the one week they win, and <laughs> then he left the stream. The 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 fi- finally something goes right for Houston, and we can't get that guy involved yet. Um, let's and we we don't see Kansas represented this week either. I think everybody there is just kind of dropped out of the fold. We're just going to go ahead and say goodbye to Kansas as a contender and Mountaineer Paul of West Virginia. I think he's also licking his wounds as those two teams have started one and two. <laughs> and as we get into this week, I pose the question off the riff, Cody Stovall. JT Wister still, which one of you feels like is you're you are the more attractive host? Oh me, <laughs> uh, me for sure. If JT would have wore a hat, he'd be in the running here. But um, that is rude. You, I, hey, I, I'm working here. I'm working on. Hey, don't disrespect the ball. JT had to get a spotlight that was a little dimmed down, like his ring lights turned on low, so that the, the forehead <laughs> doesn't ring out too much. JT, there's a reason that I sleep in a hat, my guy. All right. I'll, I, need to, I'll, I'll, I, I should take, I, should, I wish I would have taken that advice younger. Maybe it would have helped a little bit. <laughs> hey, there's, there's many things that a cowboy can teach a Ute this week and let that be number one. It is Oklahoma State and Utah as the matchup of the Big 12. We're certainly going to get into that one over the course of tonight's show. I need to know from Jake Hatch, you mentioned urine bombs next week which was a new one for uh i did look the fcc is going to allow it they will we can have a urine bomb conversation were you or any other byu cougars fans pelted in your pelting of wyoming with uh p thankfully on this trip no no urine was exchanged by wyoming fans to byu we did have some vile language though directed at byu but that's pretty much par for the course when you live in laramie wyoming so you know yeah that was a you know jake we can keep it with you for a second does your team not not suck because a lot of people thought they were going to suck this season what's your assessment in three games of byu uh, frankly, about as good as could it be hoped for right now. Jake Retzloff has had a bit of a resurgent season so far. He's one of the top 10 quarterbacks nationally in yardage and touchdowns thrown for. Now, the funny thing about this is if you listen to BYU fans in the discourse online, you would think this was a program much like West Virginia or Houston that's 1-2 and two to start the season. And you're like, what's going on? But they're three and zero. They're about as good a, pro- a start you could have hoped for for this program. And now you got Kansas State coming to town for a late night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I, I love the question, though. By the way, of like, you, you guys don't suck. I mean, that you never your team never wants to be in that category. Uh, <laughs> Still, three games Chris, I was going right season. to you next. Does your team? Does your team not suck? Because uh, everybody, I, I'm not Texas ready for the next. question. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't too. know. I, yeah. I really don't know. I, I've seen. I've seen three different versions of the Red Raiders. I don't know. And so, like, as I, I've said on my show, I know what they're capable of but I also know what they're capable of. And I don't know, I don't know, is it A, B, or C? And, and and what's door number four look like this week? I have no idea, but we've seen good, bad, ugly. Uh, and, and I guess, heck, last week it was almost great. Uh, 52 points and a half. Uh, you put North Texas away quickly, 21 points in 52 seconds. But I, they, they have a chance to not suck, but you got to go validate it and you got to put some consistency together. Yeah, I, the hosts we're blessed with this week are the ones that got wins. And each of you yeah. have looked uh, at least recently good. Richie Bradshaw of Locked on Sun Devils. Uh, drum roll, please. Does your team not <laughs> suck? I mean, is the Big 12 going to be well represented by Arizona State the rest of the year? I fear that ASU mm-hmm. does not suck. They, uh-huh. They've shown a lot of different things over the first three weeks. Against Wyoming, you showed that you can beat up lower com- uh, lower competition the way that you have been in previous years. Week two against Mississippi State, 
They gave you a run for your money, and guess what? You were able to hold on and pull out that win. Week three against Texas State, you went on the road. You were kind of getting punched in the face in the first half. Then you made adjustments in the second half. So you have found ways to win in all three games. Some of them have been uglier than others, but this is a football team that I have said before didn't know how to win last year, and they certainly look like a team this year that has figured out how to close out games when they matter. Yeah, Cam Scadaboo is good. Richie, you're here so you yeah. don't get fined, right? Is that is that the whole thing? Why, that's why you're on. The- they made the man go back out for one more second. Dude. Like, what are we doing? In that was Saint the Martin's longest hat. two seconds I have ever seen in my life. I thought Sam was going to go for a jog, and they were like, "Dude, that was only one second. We don't know what to tell you." Uh, my favorite Dude. one: Baylor in that Sugar Bowl year. They they call a timeout with three seconds to go. One of the assistants did, and Dave Aranda is just face palm against Oklahoma. Hey, the students rush the field because the clock operator let it hit zero. There are students standing on the field as Baylor kicks a field goal to go up 18 against OU at home just because they could. Hey, and Drake, here's the thing. JT knows this as well as I do. No fan base does storming the field once, not twice, but three times like the University of Utah against BYU. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. And we're gonna get to we're gonna get to Utah and Oklahoma State. But Parker Ainsworth, your microphone or computer or something didn't work <laughs> there early on. It sounds like Houston's start to the season until this week. A slow start for you tonight, but a hot start for Houston in that first half against Rice. They kept it going. Does your team not suck? We don't suck. UNLV is a good team. Oklahoma's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback. That's a callback. What if no. UNLV is elite? That's <laughs> what you're asking. What if? What if those are two playoff teams we opened up with? Um, I really don't think so. I think they're kind of finding their groove. It's a new coaching staff. The quarterback missed spring ball with an injury. I think that there's a chance that we're kind of hitting our stride here. We got Cincinnati to open the conference play. Not the toughest team in the conference. I can say that because there's no representative here. And <laughs> I, I feel fairly confident in going into it, if I'm being really honest. I liked Houston this last week. Um, I just, hey, you know. I, can, can we all just sit here and make fun of, like, TCU for choking choking that game uh, the other uh, night? <laughs> yeah, where's again? Steven? Is uh, Steven too scared? What's the deal with Steven? I don't know. But, I mean, they, they, <laughs> it's valid. the frogs blew it. I mean, we, can we sit here and all make fun of them together? I couldn't believe. I mean, coaching map, they ran the ball 17 times for, like, 60 yards the whole game. You're up 28-7. Just do the thing where you hand the ball off. Their offensive coordinator, <laughs> last name Bryles, by the way. Last name Bryles well, at TCU was like, yeah, got, you know, let's just throw the ball. He's got the great advice of one Dana Holgerson helping him out too. Yeah, Hold on now. no kidding. <laughs> what a staff they built in Fort Worth. Uh, also, Kansas. Is anybody here scared of Kansas or West Virginia at this point? What an like a, a no. terrible fall apart for West Virginia, and Kansas <laughs> might actually suck. I think Arizona. What? have fallen out right so there's a clear to me three contenders in the big 12 as we sit here today oklahoma state kansas state utah kansas and and arizona we thought would be right in there and i I just don't think you can put them in that conversation anymore i'm definitely not scared of kansas and that was a a very trendy pick to make the conference championship game and it's still a long season but i just have not liked what i've seen what happened to jalen daniels I mean, so this, that's, this is such a. He was he was wearing his highlights. He was wearing his highlights oh, on a, on a, on some watch, and we haven't seen him since. Uh, so I have to say though, if you'd have told me that Kansas was going to have a bad start of the year, I would have assumed it was a bunch of high scoring games. The quarterback's been bad. I, I, I that's not how I would have seen it coming. That was a delightful way to describe him. I don't know that I've ever seen the loss of one coordinator be such a huge Huge. issue with the team. Hey, Drake, tell him about Jeff Grimes, man. Good times are ahead. That wide zone, man. It's the wide wide zone. zone. It's some RBOs. We're getting out to the offensive lines improved. Talk talk to me, Jake. Jake, did you guys hear what Jeff Grimes, his excuse was? He said that we haven't even hit rock bottom yet. We might still go lower right now. And I'm like, that's a really bad thing to say, considering the circumstance you find yourself in. Right? I will. Whoa, before we jump into the predictions of the week for everybody here, he said after their loss to Illinois, "I still don't think we've hit rock bottom." Like, and I and it, the quote was taken out of context on Twitter. You listen to the press conference, yeah. but still, do we say that? Do we no. say that? Do we no. say like to our team after Illinois? Hey guys, yeah. it does get worse, and <laughs> then we're coming up, baby. If, you, if you're Bill <laughs> Self, if you're Bill Self, you could say it. If you're Jeff Grimes, might wanna <laughs> might wanna button that one up or put that one in your Jeff back pocket. Jeff heard Parker time. Ainsworth warn him about UNLV. I was like, guys, just get ready for it. You thought Illinois was tough. You get ready <laughs> for those running rebels in front of twenty one thousand sold out at home. Coming up, let's make. 
make big time predictions across the Big 12 with each of these hosts. It's the Big 12 squad. Don't go anywhere. Today's Big 12 squad is brought to you by FanDuel. I love to go to FanDuel and say, hey, hey, I would like to take BYU minus 10 against Wyoming. When BYU wins that game, I bet $100 on it. If it's minus 110, I win like $90. And FanDuel, America's number one sports book, lets you do that with every Big 12 game this week and every week. And we have something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 in a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Visit FanDuel.com. It is America's number one sports book. FanDuel.com, and you best bet that I might ride Iowa State minus 22 against Arkansas State this week when I gave you my best bets on Thursday on Locked On Big 12. That is FanDuel.com. Visit them today. Today's show is also brought to you by Roy. Roy is one of the brand new sponsors of Locked On. Have you heard about it? This is how fans get involved in NIL like never before by making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. Roy changes the NIL game for fans. You can directly support players, allowing fans to directly back their favorite college athletes, play a key role in shaping name, image, and likeness potential. And with exclusive content access, fans can contribute to a successful campaign and get exclusive content from the athlete. When you support an athlete, you can get behind-the-scenes footage and other personal reflections. Right now, download Roy for iOS or Android and enter the referral code Locked On, and you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. Visit Roy.com for additional details. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Get the Roy app for iOS and Android. Start making an impact for your favorite team in the NIL game. Get off the sidelines. Get in the NIL game and do it today by downloading Roy. All right, let's make our bold predictions as we dive into the biggest games in the Big 12 this week. Cody Stovall, give me a prediction as Oklahoma State hosts the best team to ever play football in the history of the world, the 2024 Utah Utes. Well, uh, Utah's best wide receiver has 155 yards, which would put him about the fifth best wide receiver at Oklahoma State. With that being said, Alan Bowman, Crom Daddy Backfoot is about to air the ball out all day on the Utes. Why does he look like that? The mustache, he's got this. Somebody tweeted, Alan Bowman looks like this privateer from the English military in the 1700s, and Cam Rising's the perfect Jack Sparrow. He's just got this ratty beard, long hair, pirate on comrade. Uh, JT Wister's show locked on Utes. You you have two minutes to respond. (laughs) Well, isn't it funny how going into this game now, we're talking about the passing attack and not Ollie Gordon? who hasn't been able to get up to form more so because of the Oklahoma state offensive line to me. And that's, what's funny, Cody, is I think so often throughout the off season, you've talked about Utah being not able to come in right away because they come from the PAC 12 being more, not at, known as as physical conference as the big 12. But I absolutely think Utah is going to win this game on Saturday because of they are going to control the line of scrimmage. I have not loved what I've seen from Oklahoma state and their offensive line. And I mean, just in the defensive side of the ball in general, I mean, you rank 120, 24th in the country in yards given up. So I I feel really good about this Utah team going into this matchup based on what I've seen from that Oklahoma state defense. Sure. We can talk about some cam rising health stuff here in a moment, but when cam rising has been on the field, he has led Utah drives eight of the 11 drives. He's finished. Utah has scored, uh, scored points on with seven of those eight being touchdowns. So I do think that this is a Utah team. Drake, I thought I had two minutes. I can't, you have, I'm cutting you off because I have seen the, the moderators cutting you off. I got to fact check you here. Uh, Cam rising has played less than four quarters, which is not abnormal early season because most games are blowouts. His is, his is partially because of injury though. I did see the direct quote of he's going to be ready to go this week, which I think was also the direct quote when Utah played Baylor last season and yeah. Cam rising. I heard yesterday was in a full body cast. What say you? He was not a full body cast, uh-huh. but I, I totally understand the trepidation. I absolutely do. We did this last year. Here is the difference. Cam rising. Last Hold on. Game, fact check it, again. Stovall doesn't understand what trepidation means. You're going to have to make it a little <laughs> bit easier. Okay. Well, J- JT, aren't we all in on the Isaac Wilson train at this point? Cam rising's old news. Go all in on Isaac Wilson. Cam rising. Like whoa, whoa, pause. Cam rising's old, not old news. There's a difference. There's a old real difference. Mama news. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Isaac did look well, good last week. I think he established himself as a good quarterback 
quarterback for the future. But as we're talking about this matchup, look, Cam Rising, he's going to play. Dorian Singer, Utah's best wide receiver, said he's going to play. Like, so if you get a player saying that, that would just be a whole nother level of Kyle Winningham, like in his media tactics. Josh Furlong of KSL.com did a great job of noting that they didn't even make Cam available to the media to, to speak with last week. He was yeah. made available. Brett McMurphy reported that he was going to play. You know, he had that injury that did require stitches, but we saw him warm up. He was out there. He's fired up and ready. He, he's going to play this week. Everything that's been reported is that he's going to play. I would be just stunned. And as we said last week, if he if that was a big game, he would have played in that game as well. Cody, do you are you scared of Utah? No, uh, people are glossing over the fact that, yes, Cam is back and he's played four quarters early on, but that's playing four quarters looking kind of out of sync timing wise after sitting on the bench rehabbing for a year. So in the past year and a half, the dudes played like four quarters and we're just glossing over the fact that Cam rising, it doesn't have some rust. If you look at the games that he even dominated, he did throw behind his receivers quite often. I don't know if that's normal for him or if he's just kind of rusty. JT, do the Tom Brady thing. Say the Tom Brady thing. <laughs> it's it's been a while. Like like Drake is noting, it's Tom Brady was more recently before he played. But I, I would say you're not wrong. There's been plays where Cam has missed throws, looked rusty at time. But this is what I go back to at the end of the day. The stat I mentioned: eight of eleven of the drives have ended in touchdowns. Yes, Utah hasn't played the best competition, but they've still marched down the field, punched it in the end zone time and time again. I and this is to be a step up, right? This will be. I mean, this is, I was going to say the best defense, but I actually think Baylor's defense might end up being better by the time the year comes to a close. So that's where it's nice that Cam, I, Jake, I know, I know, I understand it's Baylor, but they've been doing some nice things. Drake, I see your face as well. Drake, didn't you pick them to lose to Air Force? I absolutely did. I, it turns out Air Force <laughs> does suck at football, uh, but Baylor <laughs> got the win. Um, I'll, I'll give it to you. Let's pivot here really quickly before we go into our final segment. Chris Level. Richie Bradshaw, you guys play each other, Texas Tech and Arizona State. Now, it just, to me, feels like the both teams just happy to be here. I have not seen a single piece of hate online between these two fan bases. Richie, uh, to talk about Chris's hairline or something. Talk about the gray in his beard. Give me some moxie because this matchup feels way too nice. It, it really does. And uh, me and Chris actually just had a crossover episode that you can find on uh, Locked on Texas Tech and Locked on Sun Devils if you guys want more detail Hashtag about cross this promotion. I love yes. it. See, my man's working it. Out of way, Richie. Out of baby. Absolutely. But Stop with... hyping each other up. Stop being nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> fine. Hey, Chris, remember Kalen Bellage? I, I, that was my joke. I, that was that was what I was supposed to I'm say. I'm stealing it. <laughs> yeah, K- Kalen Bellage about uh, what was that? 15 or 16. He ran for eight touchdowns against the Red Raiders. Eight of them, folks. Scadabu's um, getting eight again. Oh, oh, hey, so if we're asking for predictions for games and everything, I'm just going to get in front of it. For fear of JT and Parker and Richie throwing a urine bomb my way, (laughs) all the the six home teams in the Big 12 games this week are winning. The end. I'm one of the old guys in this Big 12. Some of you new guys are just new to this league. Home teams are winning out of the gate, gentlemen. Jake, you hear that? That's going down. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. Late night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, beating the uh, – well, have hey, we seen, have I'm we calling it. I'm calling it, Jake. Kansas State, and they got a big game next week. Have I think seen Kansas it? State comes in fat and happy. You know, I mean, they're always due for an early slip-up. And uh, I think, uh, you know, feed them all those donuts you guys feed them. Uh, hey. and, and, and you give ice cream to the crowd. Yes. I've been there before. I know, I know what's up up in Provo. Those cougar tails will, will do them in, no, no doubt. Yes, yes. When I was there, they sprinkled bacon on them. It was they actually did, yeah. a little salty guys, sweet, very nice. You guys got the special edition that when they put the bacon on top. I yeah, love the, the fact that hey, Texas Lubbock and Provo were talking. Lubbock and Provo talking about distracting opponents on the way in. Like, there's a lot to do in both of those places. I love that. I love hey, that. I love that. Provo has Great. two. Bar- Provo has two bars, gentlemen. I'll tell you that. They have got exactly two. And bars. I've been to one of them. <laughs> I'm one of the few people who can say that I've been to one of them. And I was the only one there. And gosh, was it a experience. Did you, hey, did you get like a t shirt that said, t-shirt. I've been here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we haven't talked about how impressive Kansas State did look against Arizona last, last week. I mean, yeah, they held all right, fine. Let's running. do that in the next one. segment. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. But is there, or, or does Arizona suck? I mean, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. we don't. 
don't know that. Yeah, yes, we don't have anybody to ask, hey, does Arizona suck? I mean, maybe the answer is yes. Coming Chris up, does Arizona suck? And is Kansas State good? It's the Big 12 squad. Why would you even go anywhere? Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where I go when I want to go to a concert, a sporting event, an MLB game, anything. Well, I guess MLB games are sporting events, but I went and saw Tyler Childers in Utah for a really cheap deal, and I sat really close from me to you to Tyler Childers. Why? Because Game Time has last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. With Game Time, you can experience the buying concert ticket process being easier than ever. And it's why I use GameTime.co. It's GameTime.co. And I toggle the all in pricing spot, yeah, all in pricing. So it gives me a uh, <clears throat> price that's all in. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. Oh, those tickets are $20. Bucks? That's $20 off. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Lockdown College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Does Arizona suck or is Kansas State good? Uh, let's see. I'm going to draw out of my hat here. Parker Ainsworth. <laughs> You're the, the expert down in Houston who does, hasn't got to talk about too much good football this season. What did you see hey, with the old objective eye last week? The Texans are great. I will say that neither uh, Arizona or Kansas State are UNLV, but they're they're probably pretty good. No, Go Astros, I'm, I'm, right, Parker? Go Astros. Go Astros. Go Astros. <laughs> no, I, I do think that um, – so I picked Kansas State – the year i should be up front with that like i i, I guess maybe yeah. i'm hedging my bet a little bit i think it's possible that both things are true though right that like arizona might not be very good and kansas state might have an outside shot to win the conference i know we've got two of the other favorites represented right above me on the screen right now but i do think that there's a possibility here where both are true that doesn't mean that it's easy to play in provo and that doesn't mean it's easy to play in provo on a uh, at you know late night game, as I think Chris mentioned last segment, they got a big one next week. They're college kids; you could easily be looking ahead to big things down, on the line, down the line. Um, I get all those factors, but they just got to win by a point. You know, winning the conference gets you pretty far in this league, so I, I think they just got to win by a point and move on. Yeah, it's a chance that that is exactly what happens for Kansas State and Provo this week. Jay Catch, we will go to you for a score prediction. How will the game play out between BYU and Kansas State? Give me the Cougars 28, Kansas State 25. I, I think the Cougars get them at home. There's this whole theory that the vampire Cougars, as we've called them the last two years, when they play at night under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, they, they come up big. I think they do that again. Now, if Tulane can rattle Kansas State on the road, I can tell you Lavelle Edwards Stadium will have them absolutely scared, you know what, Liz. Um, I will say Kansas State down 20 to 10 at halftime at Tulane. And I had 14-7 against Arizona in that first half after going down 7-0. So their first halves have not been very successful. If BYU is able to keep this game close, I'll say this. If BYU is within seven going into the fourth quarter, the Cougars will win the game. That that atmosphere going into the fourth is unbelievable. Uh, let's go show of hands. I just here. want to see Cosmo like twirl the, the baton with the fire on it. That's what yeah. that's what I'm here to see. <laughs> he did he, he rich a showman. He did rich last it last this. Or you go, Jake. He did, it, he did it last year, and I'm sure he'll do it again at some point. Oh, I saw it. I mean, yeah. he, and, and, and one one version of him did the Michael Jackson. The other guy, oh. or one version of him swinging flames and everything. One of them's lifting weights. I'm like, who, who Push is up this person? On the table. Which and... army of people is wearing this costume? Dang, man. Hey, Richie can, Richie can attest to this, how talented Noah Fafita still is, right? Like, the fact that they only held them to seven points, I think, is a great. I mean, under 60 yards rushing. And as long as Avery Johnson doesn't have to worry about clock management before a half, I really like Kansas State. Mm -hmm. JT, why are you talking about football? I wasn't done talking about Cosmo, the most athletic mascot <laughs> in America. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and it the... Man, I feel like we have so many quarterbacks in this conference that would be elite if the forward pass wasn't invented in 1906. That seems to be. <laughs> oh, I want to. I want to agree with that. I want to agree with that. Actually, like, <laughs> KJ Jefferson to even Avery Johnson. Every third pass from Avery Johnson goes right to the hot chick in the third row of the student section. You're like Avery, what are you doing, man? He's like, I don't know, just kind of airing it out there. Um, there are worse strategies. Like heard you say that before on some other podcast. I can, I will continue to say that. Alan Bowman does that sometimes. Like, Alan, what did you just do? And he's like, I don't know, man. I just thought I was. Just, I just throw it in the ground. Why not? Have you're going to give someone a souvenir. Yeah. yeah Jake Retzel out there. Yeah. Jake, you landed the plane there. Like Baron Morton. Like there are a couple of times I'm like, Baron, 
Why? Well, what was going through your head there, big guy? What were we doing? Jay Only Daniels. in Pullman. Only in Pullman. Oh. In, in, in Lubbock, he's he's throwing dimes, man. It's like dropping tortillas. I mean, and I hope Richie's fans are ready for this because I know Kenny Dillingham was like, I hear about these tortillas and everything. Yeah, they throw them, man. They uh-huh. freeze them. They put holes in the middle of them and throw them like a frisbee. You get hit in the head, man. They it's, pee it's on them pretty. and then they you know, you're, throw hey, them. You're, you're in tortillas. I mean, coin it right now. It's coming. Torta. Make it uh, go coming. viral. Trademark Let's go to you, Chris Level. Give me a score prediction. How will Texas Tech Arizona State play out? Yeah, th- this one it's an interesting game. I-, I think for Texas Tech, obviously they've been really good at home. Twelve and three is what Richie and I were talking about before. Joey McGuire has been really good at home. Uh, they need this game. I, I think uh, I think Arizona State has been one of the best stories in the league so far. But at home, Texas Tech's just different, and they need to be different. And they need to – you've got Arizona State, then you've got Cincinnati, and then you go to Arizona, and then you host Baylor. So three of your next four at home, which on paper are winnable games. You can make some hay here, but it's got to start on Saturday. I'll go – oh, Richie, don't hate me, man, because I know we're, we're buddies and everything. I'll go 38-21. Uh, Richie, you have every right to hate him. Give me your score prediction. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? At the end of the day, just like you said earlier, ASC is just happy to be here. <laughs> we've, won, <laughs> we've won three games each of the last two years. We're already 3-0. and Is this team fluky? That's what everyone wants to know. Well, I got news for you. They're going to go into Lubbock. They're going to win this game. And everyone is going to be like, oh, hey, maybe we should take a look at them. Uh, this is going to be a high-scoring game. I n- Not betting advice. I'm taking the over, personally. I'm taking ASU in this game, 41-38. How can you say not betting advice and follow with taking the over? Guns <laughs> up. Like I said, Guns I. up, forks down. Guns up, forks down. That's what Fandle. we're doing. Fandle. Yeah. Fandle.com, yeah. official Check sponsor out. of the Locked On Podcast <laughs> Network, by the way. But Richie's not giving you betting advice. Uh, <laughs> no. Parker Ainsworth, <laughs> you have every right to tell me that Houston will beat Cincinnati by 49 this week, and no one can tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, no. I do think Houston wins this game. It's funny, taking out the first week where Houston played UNLV, a very good team. Cincinnati played Towson. But this next week, uh, you know, they played Pitt. We played Oklahoma, both power four teams. Last week, uh, we played Rice. They played Miami, Ohio, group of five rivalry games. It's similar to this point outside of that opening week. I think Houston's defense makes a big difference here. I think Houston wins a low scoring one, like 24, 17 is what I've been thinking as I've been watching this week. Uh, the spread is actually, if we're going to go back to betting lines, the kind of the other way as if we're recording this Cincinnati is a home favorite by three and a half. I, I think Houston wins this game. I think Willie Fritz gets number two, gets back up to 500 with those losses being to playoff teams. Cause UNLV is so good. Uh, I'm going to give JT Witzer still the first take on this Oklahoma state, Utah game in Stillwater. It's going to be epic. I already said, think it's two of the best teams in this conference. There's star power there. And I can't wait for Utah to announce that they are ready for big 12 football. This is a team that has been said, Hey, they're coming in. There's all this preseason hype around them. Can they actually win? Are they physical enough? And I can't wait to Utah prove just how physical they are. Cause you know what Utah's going to do. They're going to come in. They're going to put their helmets on strap up the chin straps and they will be ready to go. Utah is going to win this game in the trenches. Alan Bowman will make some plays downfield, but at the end of the day, this Utah defense will come through and Utah will win 34 to 26. Cody roast him. Hurry. It, I love the fact that you are so hyped up and excited, but you have to take into consideration that your defense, you want to talk about ours, you got torched by Utah State. That is not Alan Bowman, Dijon Stribling, Brennan Presley, or the rest of the wide receiver for Oklahoma State. It ain't happening, Captain. It is going to be an epic game. We are going to welcome you into the Big 12. It's going to be 41 38. Good guys. Oh, Good I guys. don't know if my heart can take that. 41 30 would be insane in that one. Can I just say Utah fans have me actually pulling for Van Gu- for Gundy this weekend and I just <laughs> I can't I can't what seriously yeah, that's what y'all did to me. Your fans are not happy people JT. They are not very happy people. <laughs> they Especially like on the we'll internet. after Saturday, I can promise you that. They, they don't like anything. <laughs> They don't Drink. like me, a sun, a sun Devil person. They don't like me. They know who I am. Jake. They're not fans. One thing I was also going to add about the Kansas State BYU thing. Come on, the Cougars are wearing this glorious throwback oh. from 1996. So. Oh, Robbie Bosco. Damn. Oh, yeah. that's not, that's pretty. 
That's, That's going to be hard to wear. Yeah, let's oh. go. So there you go. Chills. Yep. I'm riding with BYU. That was mm-hmm. Cody Stovall of Locked On Oklahoma State. JT Wister still of Locked On Utes. Chris Level Locked On Texas Tech. <laughs> Parker Ainsworth of Locked On Cougs for part of the show. Jake Hatch of Locked On BYU Cougars. And Richie Bradshaw of Locked On Sun Devils. Follow and subscribe to your favorite Locked On Big 12 family of podcasts. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I'll have you covered with Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast <laughs> Network. Your team. Every day, this has been and always will be locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.